Okay, we're back on again. Uh, we're going to have a look at ceilings now. Uh, we're on a floor plan viewport here. So anything that goes above our head is not really going to be visible. So ceilings, if we added them here, we'll get a warning that they won't be visible. So let's just let's just prove that. So if I go to ceiling, so an architecture ribbon, ceiling, automatic ceiling, if I click here, I should get a warning saying none of the created elements are visible in the floor plan. Of course, because they're above my head. Okay, so I'm going to undo that so I don't end up with a additional ceilings. So what I really need to see is my ceiling plan. So on your browser, you can expand the ceiling plans and double click level zero's ceiling plan. So now looking up at the underside of what would be level one, really. Okay, so we're looking at ceilings. It's asking me to save the project. I'm just going to skip that just now. And the ceiling type it's offering me is a plain one. If I use that, I won't actually be able to tell where they are because they're, they're just white when they come in. So I'm going to start with a grid for everything and then I can adjust them later on. So 600 by 600 grid. Okay, I can use the automatic ceiling utility. Okay, if I click here, it should grid the whole thing. And I'm just going to grid all the spaces. Okay, notice that this particular room, it's put the grid at an angle. Now, I think the logic here is that it's picked up the direction of the longest line in that perimeter which happens to be at an angle. Okay, here the longest line is, is this one, so it's going the right way. Okay, now let's edit these ceilings. Let's make the corridor ceiling a uh, plane ceiling. So, easier to do this afterwards, so you know there was a ceiling there. So it goes plane, so you really couldn't tell now, could you? Okay, we can look at the way the ceilings are sitting in each room. Um, let's change this one to a 600 by 1200 grid. So I click one of the lines and then change the type of ceiling. Okay, if I zoom in closer, it appears to be a line of a ceiling tile line right next to the wall there. So there might just be a thin sliver. What you can do is you can nudge the setting over till you get a different type of layout. Okay, if I click a horizontal line, then I can adjust the layout in the other direction. Okay, now I'm not 100% sure how I would align that numerically yet with, with dimensions, but I'm going to come back to that later on. Maybe just do a special on ceilings once I've sussed them out a bit more. This one, I have been able to work out how to deal with this to get it in line with this one. And so I pick on a pick on one of these nearly horizontal lines and rotate. Now the first click you make is somewhere along the length of the line you're interested in. So you just go along from the rotation point, which is where I just picked, pick a second point, that sets the angle. If you drag now horizontally and click once more, it spins it round and the lines. So now we can use the, the cursor keys to just nudge that down till it's in line with the ceiling on the other side of that partition, which would be sensible. You'd expect that the ceiling to look as if it carries on through. So we'll do the same again down here. Click on a line. Where you click becomes the rotation point, as you can see. Click again on the same line to set the angle that needs changed and then drag horizontally so you can actually straighten that up. Okay, then zoom in. The closer you zoom in, the finer the nudging becomes and you'll get that in line with just a few nudges. Okay, very easy to do. Uh, now let's have a look at what we've got in 3D now. So I'm just going to close the ceiling plan and 
double click my 3D view. So it's starting to shape up. I've got uh, I've got my columns there poking through the ceiling. Now what should happen if you click on a ceiling is that it goes transparent and you can see through. If you click on a ceiling and it, and it stays solid, it means that you've got two ceilings there and you should delete one of them. Okay, but well they're looking okay. If I click on a ceiling here, if it lets me, it's being a bit nippy. Okay, you can see I can see the back of the wall there going down. Similarly here, everything's good. Now, visibility in this software is, is, is much more complicated than it is in something like AutoCAD. When you, when you turn a layer off in AutoCAD, it goes off through the whole drawing. Uh, here, it's basically on a per viewport setup. So if I want, don't want to see the ceilings in this view, uh, then I have to control it here, uh, but the ceilings would still be visible in my ceiling, zero, ce ceiling level zero plan. So I could hide this individual piece of ceiling by right clicking it and hide in view element. So that's just that one piece of ceiling. Alternatively, if I right click a, a ceiling, hide in view category, it will hide all the ceilings. So if I use my shift and middle mouse button, I can twist around and see what's happening. Now, there isn't a clue anywhere that you've actually hidden the ceilings. It doesn't show up anywhere. Okay, you basically have to remember or start looking for this icon and seeing if those particular viewports have got things hidden in them. It's it's quite a different uh, way of working this. So I know I've hidden some stuff in this viewport. So if I click on the light bulb, it shows me the hidden elements, which are the ceilings. And if I right click that element, I could unhide. I can and here I can only unhide the category because I, I, I hid a whole category. Okay, notice this one has stayed in here, so I want to unhide that particular element. So it can get quite quite complicated this. Okay. I need to re-click the light bulb so that I can see the norm the normal in inverted commas view. Okay, so visibility, pretty tricky, something we're gonna probably need to come back to in, in various various situations but uh, that will uh, suffice for this little clip <laughs>